today on the Budweiser Boxing Series, we'll see him battle knockout artist Tyrone Trice. At stake, the IBF World Welterweight Championship. Also today, the greatest one-day bicycle race in the world. 167 miles of cobblestone roads that are not only bumpy, but dangerous. It's the Paris-Roubaix Bicycle Race. Today, CBS Sports Saturday comes to you from France. As the sun sets over the English Channel, we welcome you to the opal coast of France and the scenic seaside resort town of bec sur mer for our live coverage of the IBF World Welterweight Championship, a scheduled 15-round battle between Simon Brown and Tyrone Trice. Bonjour, bienvenue, and hello, everybody. I'm Tim Ryan, and boxing and bicycling are both on the agenda on this edition of CBS Sports Saturday. We have an enthusiastic crowd on hand here at the Palais des Sports here in burke sur mer as they await this championship bout. It's a town that is historically more famous for a battle that never took place. As you can see on this map, Berk is some 200 miles northwest of Paris. But actually, Berk is closer to London, across the English Channel, or La Manche, as the French call it. It was almost 44 years ago when the Allied forces under the command of General Dwight D. Eisenhower launched the largest seaborne invasion in history. The Nazi High Command had expected the invasion would take place in this region near Berk, with flat open beaches where the channel is narrowest. Instead, as we know, the Allies surprised the Germans by attacking on the beaches of Normandy. The largest portion of the German army was here in northern France. And when the Allies invaded Normandy, Hitler thought it was a scheme to get him to move his forces there. So he kept Rommel and the rest of his troops here in northern France, waiting for an invasion that would never come. These are the bunkers and fortifications that the Nazi occupying forces built all along the coast. Remnants are still visible here in berk sur mer But over the past four decades, the area has become a popular resort, well known for its therapeutic waters. And now, before the summer season begins, the stores are bracing for a friendly invasion of tourists and shoppers. Among them, Mr. and Mrs. Tyrone Trice. Some 90 miles to the east of Berk is the industrial city of Roubaix. And just two weeks ago, that was the destination point for 200 of the world's greatest cyclists in the Paris-Roubaix Classic. Tim Brand and Phil Liggett will have that action for you later in our program. But next up, the IBF World Welterweight Championship, Simon Brown and Tyrone Trice. As CBS Sports Saturday continues live from France, here on CBS. CBS Sports Saturday is sponsored by... Budweiser, Beechwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Haviland Supreme Motor Oil, the motor oil that's cool under fire. Ryder, we're there at every turn. And by Briggs & Stratton, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. In Burke, sur mer France. And joining me at ringside, as always, are Gil Clancy and Gil. It's kind of uh, interesting and fun to see two American boxers over here in France. I'm sure many of these boxing fans are great fight fans, are not really sure who these two guys are. And that might be said of a lot of sports fans at home. Yes, Tim, but the real fight fans know these guys. They both had distinguished amateur careers. Both have been boxing pro over four years. One loss for each fighter. And after this fight, the general public's going to know these guys. Well, let's take a special close-up look at the two best welterweights nobody knows. Simon Brown and Tyrone Trice are two welterweights with much in common. Each is in his early 20s, married, and the father of a young daughter. Each has lost only one fight. Now they're getting ready for the fight of their lives against each other. This is their chance to make the big time. I've been around Tommy Hearn, Sugar Ray Leonard, all those guys, and I don't think they have no more talent or than I have, so why can't I drive the Rolls Royces and live in a million dollar home? I'm looking forward to being in the history book one day, and I know if I'm in the history book, then I know I'm into money. Whatever the motivation, Brown and Trice have been training for this moment day and night. Brown in Miami, and Trice here outside of Atlanta. 
Interestingly, Christ breaks one of boxing's oldest rules. His wife, Natalie, is at camp with him. I think it's more strain on a fighter being a thousand miles away from home, worrying about what's going on at home. I know this is my fight, this is my career, and she knows that also. Natalie also knows the ropes and boxing's demands. I'm here with her physically, but um, at a certain point, our sexual life is, you know, is cut off. Simon has his family around him too, but it's not quite the same. Older brother Freddie is in Brown's corner. One of the things that I enjoy most of all, I think, is just being there. I think just being there uh, gives him that extra push because he wants to make sure that uh, he do well in, in his brother's presence, I think. But for now, there is one more mountain for both men to scale, and no one else can help them to the top. Both Brown and Trice know that boxing provides the ultimate matchup. Boxing is like a one-on-one Man, sports, you never have to be too tall, too short, too small, too big. No pass, no pass the ball, no you fouled out, no, none of that. It's me and you, one-on-one. One-on-one -on -one indeed, and uh, Gil, uh, for the benefit of those folks who maybe haven't seen these two welterweights on television yet, how would you describe this matchup? Well, Tim, they're both box of punches. Uh, there's a lot of checks and balances in the fight. Simon Brown has fought the better opposition, but he's only had three fights in the last uh, two years while Tyrone Trice has been active. Trice is reputed to be the better puncher. Simon Brown has the better defense. A lot of times, Trice forgets all about defense and puts that chin up in the air. And you know, Tim, in the Super Bowl, when it's a tough pick, you go with the defense. I think the defense may do it tonight. All right, the defense represented by Simon Brown. So we'll be back with this IBF Welterweight Championship live from France after these words from your local stations. Back live from berck sur mer France, and let's go to our ring announcer, Jean Donguez. Mesdames et Messieurs, bonsoir et bienvenue au championnat du monde de boxe catégorie poids Walter. Ce combat se disputera en 15 reprises de 3 minutes. Les juges sont Messieurs Gilles Grant, Edmond Horn et Georges Gondré. L'arbitre de ce combat est Steve Smogger. À ma gauche, dans le coin rouge, venant de Milwaukee, Wisconsin, États-Unis d'Amérique, son poids est de 66 kilos. Son palmarès est de 29 combats, une seule défaite, 28 victoires, dont 24 par knockout. Il est le numéro 2 mondial de la version IBF. Mesdames et messieurs, Tyron le Papillon Price. À ma droite, dans le coin bleu, venant de Washington DC, États-Unis d'Amérique, son poids est de 66 kilos, son palmarès est de 25 combats, une seule défaite, 24 victoires, dont 18 par knockout. Il est le numéro 1 mondial de la version IBF, mesdames et messieurs, Simon Brown. the way in. We're giving you instructions in the dressing room. Are there any questions? Obey my commands. God bless. Touch him. Let's roll. Let's go. There is Steve Smoker, the referee from Atlantic City, New Jersey. And as you can see, both boxers came in at 146. And the taller yes, Simon. Simon Brown, well, pardon me, Trice with a slight height advantage. Ready as you can see, six feet tall, a five, ten and a half for Simon Brown. And we are ready to go here, live from Berk. Sumer, France, it is Simon Brown in black, and Trice throws the first punch in a hurry. He's in the white trunks. Tim, I had a feeling he was going to come out smoking. He's all keyed up for this fight, and he's a very, very good offensive fighter. Tyrone Trice, 28 and 1, 24 knockouts. Simon Brown, 24 and 1 with 18 KOs. Good solid left by Brown backs up Trice. Judges, two of them from Paris, Georges. Gondre and Edmund Horn and Gene Grant from Plainfield, New Jersey. Then they say that Trice has never trained this way for a fight before. It's the best condition he's ever been in. They both look extremely fit as we watch them in the gym here in the same building as the Palais des Sports. And I thought that mentally they both were in an excellent frame of mind. Didn't you, Gil? Very confident, very relaxed. Well, Tim, they both went to training camp. They both are in good shape. And when you're in good shape, you feel good. And they're both very, very confident. 
Right to the body from Trice. You have to look for Trice to hurt Brown with one punch. He's going to get hit a lot, Tim. He makes basic errors defensively, but he can whack. Simon Brown, as you pointed out, perhaps has faced a little bit tougher opposition. Wins over Pete Seward, Kevin Howard. Sean O'Sullivan, when he came out of the amateurs, uh, had a rude awakening being flattened by Simon Brown in one of his early professional bouts. Well, that was really the downfall of Sean O'Sullivan for all time, Tim. Tyrone Trice, victories over tough Curtis Summit, and went the distance winning over Steve Little, two of the better wins on his record. First round knockout of Summit. Solid left uppercut, that wobbled Brown. Trice hurt Brown with a left uppercut. Oh, Tim, we said he could do it with one punch. Brown punching back, but he took another right hand from Trice. Under a minute to go, and now Brown rallying. Simon Brown, born in Clarendon, Jamaica, now living in Washington, D.C. Tyrone Trice, born in New York, lives in Detroit. Working that left uppercut again. Trice is fine as long as, uh, as, long as he doesn't put that chin up in the air when he punches. No touching on the break. Let's go. Under 30 seconds to go, you hear Steve Smoger warning Brown for not punching, uh, for punching on the break, rather. Well, that's good for an official to establish himself early, Tim. Take control of the fight. Right hand over the top, landed by Brown. And now he works the uppercut inside. Final seconds of round one. Round number two, Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy live from Beck sur mer in France, and Simon Brown in black comes off the stool in a hurry with two good stiff left jabs. We scored the first round for Tyrone Trice, but there was a good late rally by Brown. Tough round to score, Tim. And Tim, in Trice's corner, Ralph Sitro, great corner man, used the end swell on both of Trice's eyes. That's one of the few times I've seen that. That's an ounce of prevention, I guess. That round, by the way, went three minutes and six seconds, and that sometimes happens in Europe where they are used to stopping the clock whenever the referee stops the action for instructions or to take away points or uh, give warnings. So we'll be uh, aware of that if these rounds run longer than the normal three minutes. Both fighters are good combination punches. Two well-schooled fighters. And we've seen some good defense early by both boxers as well. Some of good shots from taking on the arms and elbows. There's a left that got through from Brown, and another. That's what you have to worry about with Trice when he puts that chin up in the air. And a big left hand by Trice. Brown in trouble. Trice after him here in the second round. Brown goes down with an overhand right. So the first knockdown scored by Trice, and Brown still in some trouble. But he wails away with a right hand of his own. Trice staying right on him, however. Anything can happen in this fight at any time, Tim. Brown struggles. He's trying to punch a little too hard, and he's leaving himself wide open. Trice tried to faint that he was hurt on a punch and then fired back, but Brown was ready and covered up well. Under a minute to go round two. These are two dangerous welterweights. Good physical recovery by Brown, who seems to have his feet back under him fairly well. Well, that's that good training, Tim. Good conditioning. Means an awful lot. This Trice is some offensive fighter. Moving off the ropes. Lands a right inside. Not a lot on it as he grazed Trice. 
final seconds of round number two. Number two, the right hand sending Brown to the canvas, but it was a left earlier that really had him in some trouble. Overhand right sending him to the canvas. We're back live in round number three. He Price was, and white, brown and black. He was already hurt, Jim, when that final right hand put him down. Steve Smoker warned Brown at the end of the round that he would take a point away if he continued to uh, throw one after the bell, as he did at the end of round number two. Brown, Brown is fighting the wrong fight, Tim. He's trying to punch with a puncher, and he's allowing himself to be wide open because he's winging his punches. He's a much better fighter than he's showing so far. He's better off when he's throwing short punches inside or snapping that jab and moving. Well, Trice has jumped into the advantage here, and Brown has been taken out of his fight plan, obviously. The knockdown scored by Trice in round two. The vacant IBF welterweight title at stake here. Each fighter has lost only once in their pro career. Right hand landed by Brown, not a whole lot on it. A little short with it. I'm here, I'm here, get out nice, okay. Trice's wife, Natalie, at ringside, and she has attended the training camp as she has uh, since their marriage two years ago, been at all of the training camps with Tyrone, plays a big role in all of the programming of the training. Pace has slackened somewhat here in round three, which I think is good for Brown, don't you, uh, Gil? Well, it, it, it is because of Brown that the pace is slackened. Brown is starting to move a little bit, step to the right, try to kill the clock a little bit, and try to figure this big, strong guy out. Here a minute to go in round three, scheduled for 15, the championship distance of the IBF. The last of the uh, three boxing organizations to maintain the old 15-round championship distance. Trice firing a lot of punches there, but none of them landing in that last several he threw. Brown digging underneath. You have to watch Brown coming out with a good left hook inside. Under the 30-second mark we go. In fact, approaching now a 10 seconds remaining in round number three. left by Price, backed up Brown at the bell. Round number four, Simon Brown in the black trunks. Tyrone Trice in white, and on our scorecard, we've given Trice the first three rounds, an agitated trainer in the brown corner, Jose Correa, exhorting his boxer, Simon Brown, to box, don't bang with a banger, as Phil Clancy had been saying back in round number two when Brown went down. This Tyrone Trice is a formidable-looking guy, Tim. Raw bone, six-footer. Looks a lot heavier than 147 pounds. Sure does. He's a big-looking welterweight. In fact, talking with him the other day, he was already talking about moving up and fighting for the 154-pound title. I suggest it's a one thing at a time. <laughs> well, you know, Tim, before, he, he always had a reputation of not being a very good trainer, never got himself in real great shape. And, boy, he sure looks like he's in good, great shape tonight. Well, the word was that uh, he was a little late getting down in weight, but by the time he got here to France 10 days ago, he was uh, right about where he should be. Brown is going to have to make Trice respect him, Tim. Right now, Trice is just walking right through him. He's going to have to nail him with a couple of good punches. Stop that momentum. Domination landed by Trice. Don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. Work out of it. Go ahead. Both guys were a little south of the border that time, Tim. You do it to me and I'll do it to you. There's another low blow from Brown. Move, 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 move. 
Price is just walking after him, keeping pressure on him all the time. Don't punch, don't punch. Get back. We're in round four, scheduled for 15 live championship action from Berck-sur-Mer in France, the region known as nord pas calais Tim, I noticed that uh, Tyrone Trice is starting to blow a little bit now, starting to breathe through his mouth, and it's only the fourth round. Under the 32nd mark we go. Quite warm in here, we might add. Weather was cool and breezy today, but in this arena with a tin roof and a lot of lights, it's quite warm here in the ringside area. Coming to the end of round number four. Round number five, Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy live from berck sur mer France as we're watching the IBF welterweight championship bout. Tyrone Trice in white, Simon Brown in black, and don't forget later in our program on CBS Sports Saturday, we'll bring you the Paris-Roubaix bicycle race, the most grueling one-day race there is. That's later in the program. Right now, Tim, that's what Simon Brown needs, a bicycle. <laughs> that's the box. We have the fight scored the first three rounds for Trice, a very close fourth round. The only knockdown scored by Tyrone Trice in round two. And he has been the more physically dominant boxer and lands a good right inside that backs up Brown. Tim, he just looks so much bigger and stronger than Brown. He's muscling all over the place. 24-year-old Tyrone Trice stands six feet tall. Brown has picked up a Paris match label from the ropes here and trying to make a match of it having difficulty so far in the fifth round come here don't, 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 don't. Steve Smoker was able to uh, rip the commercial off the back of Simon Brown right hand landed by time, Brown time. neutral corner place Loose place, lace time, on the, on it's the tape it appears to be on place, the uh, glove on. of uh, Simon Brown. And nobody's let's come go. up from the corner as yet, but time has been stopped let's here in the it. fifth let's round. Get a scissors. All right, that's it. All right, let's go. Let him out, let him out. Come on, come on. Come on, cut this thing off. All right, let's go. Time in. Time resumes here in round number five as they cut some tape off the glove of Simon Brown. Now I wonder whose advantage that was uh, to <laughs> him to have that. Uh, Had to be loose. Trice, uh, but Brown Let's landed his best punch of the fight just prior to it. His overhand right, which he just tried again there without effect. Now Brown finding the range, lands a left hook. Don't punch, I'm here. Very nice. All right, out we go. Out we go. Out we go. And Steve Smoker sure is an alert referee, Tim. Good condition, moves real well in the ring. Price working the body. Now comes up to the head. And backs up Brown again. Don't punch, Mike. Step back, step back, step out, step out, step out. the right hand not a whole lot on it but he caught twice off balance sent him back to the ropes under the 32nd mark we go in round five right hand landed by brown price shakes that off brown did start to find a little range with that overhand right in this fifth round gil well price is blowing a little bit now tim he's expended a tremendous amount of energy with all those hard punches there's that good body shot. That's a left hook that you expect to see from Brown to the body. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy back for round number six. Remember, this is a 15-round championship bout for the vacant IBF welterweight crown. Simon Brown with a fairly good rally in round number five, as we saw it. Trice has had the best of it through four. 
Brown is not shooting that right hand, Tim. He's looping the right hand, just trying to punch a little too hard. Don't punch, don't punch him. No, he's only had the three fights in, in two years, Tim. They haven't been tough fights, and that inactivity can hurt you. I like an active fighter. Right hand from Trice fell short. But he's been able to assert his dominance when he's wanted to, as he did just there. He is an imposing looking welterweight. He sure is. Now, Trice dropped his hands there, kind of in disgust at the low blows from Brown. But Tim, what he's doing now, he's fighting in spurts, not fighting a steady round at all. It's okay for him to say the guy's not hurting him, but the guy's hitting him. And scoring points. Scoring points, and when you get hit in the body, Tim, takes the, takes effect a lot later on in a fight. He's been hitting with a lot of good left hooks to the body by Simon Brown. Talking to the man who runs the gym here at the Pal 84, watching training of both fighters, he said this was what Price had been doing the past 10 days, kind of sparring in spurts and flurries, not working the whole three minutes. But when he turns it on, <laughs> wow. Yes, indeed. Good right hand by Brown. That's got Trice's attention. He's backing up now. Under a minute to go, round six. That's the first punch that Brown has thrown that really got Tyrone's attention, got his respect. Bryce now punching a little more wildly. None of those punches affected. Well, that's what we said to me. He lets it all hang. He's a great offensive fighter, but sometimes forgets all about defense. So far, he's been boxing beautifully and Watch fighting. In there. But uh, that can change. Long way to go in the IBF 15 round championship distance. Coming to the end of round number six. Tyrone Trice and Simon Brown for the vacant IBF welterweight crown. We're back in round number seven. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy live from berk sur mer France. Tyrone Trice in white, Simon Brown in black, and on our card we've given Brown the last two rounds after Trice had the good start, including a knockdown in round two. Tim, we had mentioned earlier that uh, Simon Brown had to land a good punch in order to get Tyrone, Tyrone's attention. Now it's the other way around. It's Trice that's gonna have to get himself back. Brown just scored again heavily and lands a good uppercut. And Trice's corner between rounds, they were telling him to keep his hands up. Well, he's a little hurt now, Trice. But he's, a, he's dangerous, hurt and dangerous. Great, great, now Trice great, great. grabbed on to Brown, grabbed on to Brown, and then be all right, be all they right. tumbled Let's into go. the ropes together. Definitely in more of a defensive posture now, Tyrone great, Trice. Great come on, come on, come on. Get back, get back. Brown trying to pick up his pace. Trice apparently trying to load up here and let Brown do the punching, looking for an opening. There's a good uppercut by Brown. Another one. And another right hand over the top. And what a fight. Trice in trouble. A right hand by Brown again. Trice does the right thing. He grabs on. Little wobbly legged. That's up to the referee to break him now, Tim. Intelligent defense there as he was hurt. Brown keeps up the pressure. Tim, what a mental Rick sport this boxing is. Brown has his confidence now. He's a completely different guy. And Trice trying to find his legs under him. That right hand blocked by Trice. Brown now should just throw short punches. He doesn't have to land the one big one. Under a minute to go, a little blood from the lip of Tyrone Trice, and he's still backpedaling. Don't 
don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. I like the way Trice knows when to grab on, though, Kill. Absolutely, Tim. So many fighters uh, will try to go into a shell along the ropes or stay on the bicycle when their legs aren't there. There he grabs Reed, again. Don't punch, don't punch. Get out, get out. Under the 30-second mark we go. Round seven. What a turnaround by Simon Brown. Price is still very calm, though, Tim. Killing the clock, trying to get his leg back under him. The vacant International Boxing Federation Welterweight Championship at stake. Two Americans battling for it here in France. Coming to the end of round seven. Another good one for Simon Brown. Let's go back and take a look at that big right hand by Simon Brown in round Here, seven. There it is. It did some damage to Trice, and Brown went on to score heavily during the rest of the round, and he comes out like a tiger now. Brown in the black trunks. Tyrone Trice in white. I still think Brown should be throwing the short punch punches punch in out. boxing, Tim. Work. Punch out. Been a dandy so far through seven rounds. Price backed up Brown with the left, and then Brown fired back and stopped Price in his tracks. Here's Lisa Brown, the wife of Simon Brown, like the Natalie Trice, who made the trip over here to France to watch her husband try for a world championship. You're banging in there, boys. Simon Brown from Washington, D.C., born in Jamaica. Moved to this country at age 13. Got a message from the Prime Minister of Jamaica wishing him good luck, Edward Siega. Sent his wishes along this afternoon. Brown banging to the body, and Price lands with a wild right that scored. The tide turns, it, turns in this fight, Tim, round after round. Punch by punch. I believe Marlon Starling and Lloyd Huntington, the other two welterweight champs, are watching with great interest here today to see who comes out of this one as the IBF champion. Well, whichever fighter wins, Tim, he's a true champion. These are two real good fighters. Under a minute to go. Round eight. attrition at this point is a bolter landing. Solid punches during this eighth round. Neither fighter able to take dominant position in this particular three minutes. That's that left hook to the body, Tim, that's so effective, takes so much out of you. And Brown almost got nailed, pulling back out of a clinch, which is a no-no. We didn't see much of that left hook to the body of Brown's early in the fight, but he's started to use it effectively. Price again, caught him right in the ear. Go, go, go. Here's a look at the end of round eight. You see Steve Smoger trying to stop the action and each of them getting in a couple of little extra nudges. Now we're back in round number nine, live, scheduled for 15. The vacant IBF welterweight title at stake. Simon Brown in black, who has come on over the past four rounds as we've seen it, after Trice had the best of the early going, including a knockdown in round two. Don't forget the Parry roubaix bicycle race to follow here on CBS Sports Saturday. You'll see some physical action in that event as well. Tim, that knockdown could be very significant if this fight goes the distance because it's it's the, the fight is scored on points. But then again, Brown had one big round, which could have been a two-point round. Round number seven possibly could be a two-point round for Brown. Although he did not score a knockdown. The 
judges, one from New Jersey, Gene Grant from Plainfield, two from Paris, George Gundra and Edmund Horn. They'll do the scoring on the 10-point must system. There's a good right hand by Brown again as Price dropped his hand. The difference right now, Tim, is those left hooks to the body. Good Price is dangerous again. Yes, he he is. comes back again. Good combination inside and a right hand by Price and Brown. Backs him up with a left hook. And Tim, the combinations these guys are throwing, both of them have spent years in the gymnasium learning to put those punches together the way they both are. We have two sore guys at the end of this one, no matter what the outcome. One of them will go away as a champion. Barring a draw, heaven forbid. Price, it seems to me, Gill is slapping a little bit more than really getting the good leverage. That right wasn't bad, but he doesn't seem to have the same sting he had earlier. Well, Tim, at, all of a sudden, he may land that one big one, though, at any, any time. It can all come together. A dangerous man. 24 knockouts and 28 victories for Price. He has been running out of gas, Tim, but he, he has his second win now. How long that will last, we don't know, but he does have a second win. He's alive again. Under 30 seconds to go here in the ninth round. The combination scored by Brown and Trice fires back. A little rest time and they deserve it at this point. <laughs> and a lot of punches thrown in this fight. Coming to the end of round nine. Tim, they work harder when they're resting than most guys do when they're fighting. <laughs> right. Clancy back here in Berck-sur-Mer, France. Round 10 scheduled for 15. The IBF vacant welterweight title at stake. Simon Brown and Black. Tyrone Trice and White. It has been a grueling battle. Brown has turned things around in our view since about round five after Trice got off to a dynamite start, including a knockdown in round two. Tim in Trice's corner, they told him there was nine more minutes for the fight. They must have thought that uh, all fights are 12 rounds. That's a heck of a thing to tell a guy if he lasts nine minutes and they say he got three more to go. Brown just hurt him inside with a couple of uppercuts and down goes Price. Well, not, not all the way down, but he's into the ropes in trouble. Two sharp uppercuts. And now Trice survives and gets out of there, trying to get his feet under him. Did not go to the canvas. Looked like he might, but he stayed up gamely. Now, that was smart. Price put his hands up to protect his chin, and Brown ripped the left hook to the body. There's those short punches inside that Brown throws so well. Talk about conditioning. Here's Price firing back after he literally wobbled along the ropes, nearly headed for the canvas. And he's firing back and landed a good right hand, but a left of the body straightened him up. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Right now, Brown is throwing the shorter punches. That's been the difference. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. Price has all the guts in the world, Tim. He's still strong, but his legs are gone. is able to maneuver him around, move around. Price can only stand flat-footed and punch. Right now, that's all he knows how to do. Under a minute remaining, round 10. Okay, Very weary-looking Trice, firing gamely at the legs, about to go again as Brown lands a right hand. And another right. Then this Tyrone Trice is double tough. Is he game? He's only lost once. It was a first round knockout at the hands of dangerous Fred Pendleton. Simon Brown has lost only once. That by decision. Two Marlins stalling and a split decision. 
I'm here, I'm here. Coming to the end of round number 10. Big one for Simon Brown. The end of round number 10, Simon Brown, who had been warned earlier for punching after the bell, threw another one, and this time Steve Smoker, the referee, took a point away, and it was a big round for Brown, so that was costly because he had a point taken away. Possibly made the round even. May have scored well enough for a two-point advantage in the round, and so therefore may still have won the round, but uh, that we'll find out later when we see the judges' scorecards. We're into round number 11. 15 round championship distance of the IBF. The vacant welterweight title at stake. It's I'm been all Simon Brown since round number five. Tim, I, I noticed that uh, Tyrone Trice has some spring back in his legs. Amazing. He was in big trouble in the tent. In a terrific action fight through 10 rounds. Live on CBS Sports Saturday, still to follow the Paris Roubaix bicycle race. Many of the stars you'll be seeing in the Tour de France later this summer on CBS. Brown still keeping the pressure on Trice. There's that dig to the body again, Tim. That takes it out of you. But Simon Brown is starting to blow pretty good now himself. Right hand by Brown just missed. What happens when Trice is punching, Tim? He, he leaves himself wide open. And always nail him with a counter. Brown tried for the home run there and missed it. But he does have Trice backing up. Well, I don't think that Tyrone Trice is going to get a third win, Tim. He had his second win, and he's starting to wear down again. is making the mistake of walking after him without punching. He's got to throw those short punches, move him behind the jab. Now he's doing it. Coming to the end of the 11th round, Price largely in retreat. Brown unable to land too many scoring punches, but there's a big right hand. The only real effective punch in round 11 came right at the end, thrown by Simon Brown, that big right hand. But over the course of the round, he was the forcing fighter. Tim, he's making the mistake again. He's trying to nail him with the one big punch. Not necessary. Right now, despite the one point off, we have Brown ahead in the bout. We're in round number 12, scheduled for 15. A knockdown scored by Trice in round number two. A point taken away from Brown in round number 10. Nice combination by Tyrone Trice. Trice. A big right hand right to the chin. That brought the crowd alive. You have to like this Tyrone Trice, Tim. Get off his neck, Ty. There you see Tyrone Ty Trice dancing, Tim. And he showed a little strength still left, too, by pulling Brown around. Don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. Don't punch Tremendous punch, conditioning, punch. both these fighters. It's sure apparent here as we're into the 12th round. Trice can't win the fight this way, though, Tim. He's going to have to suck it up. I don't know how he can do it, but he's going to have to try. He's not going to win the fight running away. He's a puncher. He's got to set himself and let him go. Wild overhead right. Overhand right missed by Simon Brown. Put that body. Put that body. Put that body. 
Price fighting this round for survival. Backed up by a jab of Brown. Under a minute to go in round 12. Well, if you were with us from the beginning, you have to be amazed. There's a knockdown, tremendous shot by Brown. Left hand sending Price to the canvas with great authority. Price gamely gets to his feet. And he's telling the referee he's all right, Tim, as he has, does this kid have guts? And he has ability. Just pushed down that time by Brown. And he was hit when he was down, Tim. Brown hit him when he was down. There was no knockdown punch, that's for sure. That should not have been a knockdown, and he was hit when he was on the canvas. Steve Smoker evidently didn't see either of those circumstances. Brown goes right after him again. And down goes Price again. Price got up, the round was over. Price got up before the count of 10. The count continued after the bell. Brown thought the fight was over, but it was not. The round had ended, and Price managed to get to his feet and managed to get back to the corner between the 11th and 12th round. Tim, and Steve Smoker did a good job. He told them the round is over, the round is over. I don't know why nobody paid attention. Now they better take a good look at Tyrone Trice in this corner because sometimes courage can be too much. It's too dangerous. The bell sounded just after he was knocked to the canvas. The count continued after the bell according to the rules, but he got up before 10. We'll see the first knockdown. There it is. Big left hand from underneath on an upward rising shot right on the point of the chin. And then he was pushed down for a second time. Tim, and then knocked down again at the end of the... Tim, championship or no, they should not allow this kid to come out for this round. This is round 13, and Trice in great difficulty. There is no three knockdown rule, and the rules of the IBF is at the discretion of the referee. And though he went down right at the end of the bell for the third time, he was able to get up before the count of 10. But he's in big, big trouble. And Brown is losing his cool. A little over anxious. Price holding on in desperation, but no legs at all. Tim, if, if Steve, Steve Smoker pushed him hard, breaking him, he'd knock him down. Another left hook by Brown. Price uh, still keeping Brown from getting a clean shot at him. What a game display by Trice. But it's been all Brown since round five, and Tyrone Trice fighting on guts alone. And Brown, a little over anxious. There's a big right hand again, Tim. Again, Trice grabbing onto him. Now it's time for Steve Smoker to step in there, Tim. Simon Brown still has not been able to get a clean shot. Price somehow keeping himself in it as his wife Natalie looks on with obvious concern. And there he nearly goes down, knocked into the ropes. Incredible display by Price to stay on his feet. Bobbing and weaving and grabbing and clutching and doing whatever he can to survive. Tim, even if a miracle happened and he hit Simon Brown on the chin and knocked him out. This fight should definitely be stopped. Under a minute to go now. Somehow, Tyrone Trice has made it through two minutes. He's doing it because Simon Brown has lost his pool. All he has to do is faint, step back, and step back in again. Again, Trice tying up Simon Brown. He was, at this point, a very frustrated guy looking to his corner, as if to say, what do I do? How do I stop him? <laughs> 20 seconds remaining. Another right hand by Brown, but again, not a good clean shot. This is another.
Well, Trice may not have anything left, but he's kept himself into round 14. Final seconds of the 13th. Well, here's some more action at the end of the 13th round. Right at the bell, a blow landed by Brown. Steve Smoger steps in, and Tyrone Trice has still got enough energy to give him a little shot on his way to the stool. We're live in round 14. Tim Ryan with Joe Clancy. What a battle this has been here in berck sur mer France. Tyrone Trice in white just surviving for the last three rounds against Simon Brown, who can't put him away. Big right hand by Trice, Tim, right on the chin. Whether he has any strength left, who knows? But look at the courage that he has. And these French fight fans are responding to it. And Brown is dead tired himself right now. He used up a lot of energy in the 13th. Chasing Trice around, trying to land a KO punch. There's a good left landed by Brown, but look at Trice rally. Can we mention that these were the two best unknown welterweights in the world. I'm sure the people know them now. Price just fell down there, trying to get close to Brown, but they are calling it a knockdown. There may have been a punch thrown, but it was mainly just his own inertia that took him down. And there's a cut under the left eye of Simon Brown. I believe they collided heads in that fall by Price. Tyrone Trice knocked down three times in the 12th round, and here he's still going in the 14th. Tim Brown does, doesn't have to knock him out now. All he has to do is keep his cool. Under a minute to go. We haven't given a round to Trice on our card since round number four. Legs are gone again, Tim. There's a right by Brown and a left. Trice stays on his feet. Unbelievable. Tim, I looked at the canvas myself that time. Another left landed by Brown. Smoker looking very close. Oh. There's a big left. That'll be it. Enough. Steve Smoker has stepped in with that left hook. And the new IDF champion in the welterweight division is Simon Brown from Washington, D.C. Jamaican-born Simon Brown finally got his man. What a display by Tyrone Trice. And a huge left hook finally getting Steve Smoker to step in and stop the fight. A 14th round knockout by Simon Brown, who is a weary man himself. He's on the stool getting attention. There's a look at Tyrone Trice's wife, Natalie, is there. Simon Brown having his cut attended to. Let's go back to the end of the fight with Brown battering Trice along the ropes. Trice somehow able to avoid the worst shot, but there was the big clean left hook, and Steve Smoger stepped in immediately, said that is enough. 229, 229. 229 of the 14th round. Simon Brown, the new IBF welterweight champion. And Tim, Simon Brown really let it all hang out. He is tired. He has to be. What a battle to win the crowd. Coming up, don't forget, we've got the Paris-Roubaix bicycle race, and we'll be back here in berck sur mer in just a moment. We are back at Burke sur mer where the champion of the world, International Boxing Federation champion, is Simon Brown with a 14th round knockout. An absolutely tremendous battle against Tyrone Trice. Try and get Simon over here. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, we've got Simon with us now. Simon, let's show the uh, action from the last round. See it straight ahead of you here as you had this guy in all kinds of trouble for the last two or three rounds. But uh, it was that big left hook that brought Steve Smoger in. He was a hard guy to finish off. Yeah, exactly. He, he was hard. I mean, I give him all the credit in the world. I didn't thought he would lose his own, but he surprised myself a whole lot. He hang on in there all the way until the 14 rounds, and he just tough. He put me down for the first time in my career, and I know what it's like to get put down. It was my mistake. I stay in there fighting him instead of box. But the good Lord was on my side, and I thank Jesus Christ to give me the opportunity. And also, Simon, I thank CBS to give me this opportunity. All right, all right, Simon. Congratulations to you. Let's just take a look at uh, let's take a look at that knockdown punch again in the 14th round. The big left hook, and you're almost as tired as the losing fighter. And that's uh, understandable uh, because it was a hard-fought battle. You had to get off the floor in round two. You turned the fight around in the fifth round, we thought. But uh, you certainly never fought a more game fighter in your life. Oh, exactly. Terrell Trice, I mean, he got speed. He got power. I mean, this guy was unbelievable. I ain't never fight anyone like this. You know, even... I fought Marley Star and he was rough and tough, but this guy have speed, and he just surprised me a whole lot. But by the help of God, I came through it a whole lot. And I'd like to say thanks to my mother and father. Okay, and also, Simon. thanks to my mother-in-law and Shirley, and Mr. <laughs> William, and my daughter. All India, right, the whole home. family are all behind you. All, all right, Simon. All the people who died us in Washington, okay. D.C., we're coming home. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, as we mentioned, we are going to take you now to the Perry roubaix bicycle race, the city of Roubaix, only 90 miles away from here. Two weeks ago, the site of the climax of an annual Rite of Spring, the Perry roubaix bicycle race staged every year with one exception during World War II. It goes all the way back to 1896. Our Tim Brandt and Phil Liggett cover the action for CBS Sports Saturday, and they tell us first why this great race is referred to here as L'Enfer du Nord, the Hell of the North. 